How many of you guys have been reading through the book of Proverbs while we've been going through the book of Proverbs? Any hands? Anyone doing it? Yeah, some, a few, very few. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. I hope you guys are enjoying it. Uh, it's a good book. Okay. So we're looking at Proverbs chapter 9, verses 7 to 12. 7 to 12. All right. So before we go into the actual passage, I just want to do a little bit of a review. Okay. A little bit of a review of what we've been going over. For those of you who've missed a week here and there, or you don't remember the past weeks, you've forgot to take a sermon note. I just wanted to go over with you guys a little bit about what we've gone over for the past five weeks. Today's the sixth sermon in this series. Um, it's the last one, but I'm going to start from the very beginning. I'm just going to go through the takeaways with you guys, okay, just so that you have a fresh memory. And the blank space that you have on your sermon note cards, uh, that's for you to fill it in, okay? All right, so the first one. The first week we talked about how godly wisdom comes to those who respect God, who revere him, okay? Please remember that at the very beginning of the book of Proverbs, we are told that you and I, we cannot receive godly wisdom if we do not honor God. Godly wisdom comes to the people of God when we first give God utmost respect, when we give him the utmost honor, when we give him reverence, Gem Youth, that is when God will pour out his wisdom upon us. Um, we have to be in that state, okay? So please keep that in mind, okay? Godly wisdom comes to those who respect God. The second thing that we covered is that God's wisdom is always seeking out people to correct and to instruct. God's wisdom, His infinite wisdom is never hiding herself from you and I. Wisdom is always calling out in the public streets. She is always calling out to us in our daily life in order to correct us and to instruct us, to teach us. Wisdom, God's wisdom, is always calling out to us, okay? It's always seeking out people to help and to guide, all right? The third thing that we talked about is that the wisdom of God helps Christians live a faithful life. I told you this, and all of us agreed on this. No one likes an unfaithful friend. No one wants to marry an unfaithful spouse. No one wants to have an unfaithful husband or an unfaithful wife. We all want a faithful friend. We want to have faithful people beside us. Same thing with God, Gem Youth. God wants us to be a faithful people. Amen? Amen? So his wisdom leads us to be a faithful people and to live a faithful life. It is very important to remember that. Um, that loyalty is huge, guys, in our relationship with God and in our relationship with one another. God's wisdom will always lead us to live a faithful life before God. Okay, the fourth thing that we covered two weeks ago is that a person who seeks after God's wisdom reviews God's word again and again and again and again. A maturing Christian, if you are really a maturing Christian, you don't just read a word once and say, all right, I've, I read that verse or I memorized that verse, I'm done. That's not how it works. Uh, you need to review God's word over and over again because there are things that you might have missed, other things that God might want to show you, that he might want to speak to you through the same passage that you maybe you went through last time. Uh, it's important to review God's word because um, we forget. We are forgetful creatures. You and I, we forget very often. Um, like I said, you guys probably don't even remember what you ate this past week. Um, we only remember a few things at a time. That's why we always have to review, review, review. Okay, and there are two things that happens when we review God's word. The first one is when we review God's word, the word of God reminds us who we are, that we are God's children. Amen? Amen. That we are God's creation. The second thing that happens when we review God's word is that the word of God, if you really, really meditate on it and, and soak it in, it brings peace into your life. A peace that comes only from Jesus Christ that is beyond all understanding. And last week, what we talked about was a person who seeks after God's wisdom pursues the things that please God's heart. A person who really seeks after God's wisdom will always pursue the things that please God's heart. Um, if we're not pursuing God, a lot of times you and I, we, we end up feeling like, oh, you know, I'm always doing the bad things. I'm always failing. I'm always uh, coming up short. I'm not doing this well. I'm not keeping up my QTs. I'm not praying every day. I'm not 
speaking kindly to someone. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. And it just leads, uh, leads us to live a very negative mindset, to have a very negative outlook on life and a ne very negative faith. Uh, but that's not how we're called to live. Amen. We are called to live as a people who seek after the things that please God's heart. Rather than focusing on the negative things, God wants us to focus on the things that please his heart. Uh, so rather than uh, pursuing um, uh, uh, unfaithfulness, God wants us to pursue faithfulness. Rather than pursuing pride and being prideful and arrogant, God wants us to pursue humility because that pleases his heart. Rather than being all about myself, God wants us to be all about other people, caring for people. Uh, those are the things that God wants us to pursue. And a person who seeks after God's wisdom, they're always focused on pursuing those things, the things that please my father's heart, the things that please the heart of God. Just like, again, like I said last week, for my wife, I always want to do the things that please her because I love her. Um, same thing with God. Because we love him, we want to do the things that please him. Amen? Amen? Can I get a louder amen? Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. All right? Let's, let's be like our African-American brothers and sisters, okay? Be a little bit more responsive, Gem Youth, okay? All right, today we have one last comparison. Today is one last comparison. In Proverbs chapter 9, verses 7 to 12, uh, we are looking at a difference of response. And the response is, we're, we're going to read about the response of a scoffer, or in other words, a, a, a person who mocks. And we're going to look at the response of a wise person. Because wisdom is actually giving an invitation. God's wisdom is giving an invitation at the beginning of chapter 9. So at the get-go of today's passage, we see the first response. And the first response is a, a scoffer or a mocker. And we get to kind of see what this kind of person is. So in Proverbs chapter 9, verses 7 to 8, uh, let's read it all together on the screen. Okay? Ready? Begin. Anyone who rebukes a mocker will get an insult in return. Anyone who corrects the wicked will get hurt. So don't bother correcting mockers. They will only hate you. Okay? So there are three things that we learn about mockers and scoffers. The first thing is that uh, they like to throw insults at you. The second thing is they try to hurt you. And the third thing is they hate on you. And at first class, we might think, oh, at first glance, we might think to ourselves, yeah, you know, like I don't really like these types of people. Uh, no one really does. Because scoffers and mockers, they're always pessimistic. They're always negative. Uh, they're always passive and they're always sarcastic. Um, they're very cynical people. And here's the thing. Mockers, they only take themselves seriously. They don't take other people seriously. Gem Youth, listen very carefully. I just want to say this once because I want to put it out there because we just got back from the leaders retreat and I want to appreciate your leaders. Please don't mock your leaders. I'm being very serious. When you mock your spiritual authority, you are mocking God. Your leaders are here by God's calling and appointed by God to oversee and to care for you. Do not mock them. Please don't just be good to me. Be good to your leaders. Because if you get into the habit of mocking your leaders, you are mocking God. So stop that. Amen? Amen? I want a louder amen. Amen. Jem Youth. 정신 차려. Don't mock your leaders. Mockers are very cynical people. They only care about themselves. They don't take other people seriously. It's a pride issue. And here's the thing. Listen, you and I, we are very prone to be this kind of person. Uh, you and I, we can be very sarcastic and cynical people. We mock each other often. That's a very North American thing. Um, the First Nations people, they don't like it. Um, that's not a part of their culture. It's very disrespectful. It's rude. But here in North America... It's just a part of our humor and the way that we joke around, but at times it can definitely get out of hand. And sometimes because we practice it as a society in North America, we end up actually treating God with this kind of same attitude, a sarcastic attitude towards God. Uh, we give him that kind of passiveness. Um, this is apathy, Jem Youth, um, at its worst. Um, and the thing is, is the Bible warns us over and over and over again, and especially here, the Bible warns us, don't be that kind of person. Fight against being like that kind of person because a mocker hates correction. A mocker doesn't like to be told what they're doing wrong. Again, they only take themselves seriously. They don't like to take other people's advice seriously. 
They like their own way. And what ends up happening with mockers and scoffers is that because they like their own way, they end up growing up in a very wrong way. They end up growing up in a very unbiblical way. They end up growing up in a very ungodly way. And here's the thing, Jeremy. If you and I know this, and I shared this with you a couple of weeks ago, God's ways are higher than ours. Amen? His thoughts are greater than ours, but if you truly believe that, then you need to let go of your pride and you need to hold on to God and say, God, I want to grow in your way. I want to grow in your wisdom. I really want to grow and live a life that actually matches the life of Christ, that fits with the life and the teachings of Jesus Christ. Um, Jem Youth, this is possible because uh, God sent his son down so that we would be able to actually live the life that you and I were created to. Amen? I say this all the time. I don't know if you guys hear me, and maybe I've said it too often where you've kind of like shut it out because it's just too, too common for you. But you and I, we were originally made to live a very different kind of life. You and I were not made to live in sin. We were not made to be bound by sin. We were supposed to be made to live freely in the presence of God. Amen. In the spirit of God, to in enjoy the, the, the joy of salvation. That is what we were made for, Gem Youth. Um, this is not the life that we were made to live where we are bound by our sin. We were made to live freely in Jesus Christ. Paul, in his letter to the Christians in Col Colossae, in Colossians chapter 2, verse 3, Paul writes that Christ in him are hidden all of the treasures of God's wisdom and knowledge, which is why in other, in other letters, he also talks about, like in Ephesians chapter 4, that you and I were supposed to grow up into Jesus Christ. Not outside of Jesus Christ, but we're supposed to grow up in Jesus Christ because in him are hidden all of God's wisdom and knowledge. That's how we are supposed to grow, Gem Youth. Um, and so rather than rejecting or ignoring or being sarcastic with God's wisdom when she invites us to learn, when she invites us to grow, you and I, when we read the Bible, the Bible actually wants us to accept and to receive wisdom's invitation so that we can continue to grow in Jesus Christ the way that we were intended to. Um, and so in Proverbs chapter 9, verses 8 and 9, this is what uh, the author writes. But correct the wise, and they will love you. Instruct the wise, and they will be even wiser. Teach the righteous, and they will learn even more. If you ever meet a maturing, wise person, especially someone who is maturing in God's wisdom, they never stop learning. They're always learning something. Um, Pastor Kevin once shared uh, at the retreat, he was talking about one of his old professors, J.I. Packer. Um, and the thing is, is this man, I think he's well in his 90s right now. Um, but he was probably in his late 70s or so when he was teaching Pastor Kevin at Regent College. Um, and one of the, at, one of the, the, uh, uh, at one of the sessions in their, in their classes, um, a student asked pa Professor J.I. Packer a question. And Professor J.I. Packer, he's in his 70s. He's been studying the Word of God and everything. Do you know what his response was? I don't know. And Pastor Kevin said that that floored him because it was like, well, we're supposed to expect something from this guy. But even in his 70s, Professor J.I. Packer, he was willing to admit, I still have so much to learn. There's still so much more that I need to learn and grow in, in Christ. Um, that's how a wise person should have as a, as a mentality, as an attitude. That's how we should be. Um, do you guys know people who love to learn? Do you guys have a friend that's like that? A friend who just loves learning? Like they are just bookworms. If you buy them a book for their birthday, they're the happiest person on earth. Those weird people. Have you ever? No? No? Okay. Um, I've, I've shared with you guys. My nephews, they love learning. Uh, my nephews are all about reading books. They always get books from the library. They're still very young, uh, grade five and grade three. Uh, but they love learning. And do you guys know what their favorite subject is? No, oh, man. Our family doesn't do math. You know this, guys. I have trouble with addition, let alone fractions and stuff. They love animals. Yeah. The, remember the Kratz brothers? Like, my nephews in Abbotsford, they are all about animals. They love animals. And I told my nephews uh, the other, I think it was a, a, a few weeks ago when I did the family service, I, and, and also, I, I think I shared it at Gem Youth. And I was like, hey, Ethan Elliot, guess what? I actually talked about the platypus at church. They were like, oh, 
that you did? Like, did you talk about the whole bill? And then they started going back into it, and they were all excited. And then, and then Ethan was like, Uncle Josh, guess what else we learned? I was like, yeah, what is it? Giraffes. Do you know how they clean their nose, their nostrils? I was like, how? With their tongue. <laughs> what? That's disgusting. Do you know how long a giraffe's tongue is on average? 52 centimeters. It's 20 inches long. So if you ever uh, <laughs> go and research it, you will find pictures of giraffes with their hyo coming out, and it goes right in the kokomo. Um, and they swish it around. Uh, and that's how they clean their nostrils. Um, I believe, I don't know. I, well, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if they're going to like, you know, lick their uh, tongue on, on, on like grass or something. I'm sure they eat it. But anyway, that's how they clean their nose. And I was like, oh, Ethan, that's disgusting. But it's so interesting, right? Um, another interesting fact that I learned from them because they love learning about animals is that cats, my wife is a cat lady, uh, but cats, uh, they can make over 100 different sounds. They have two vocal bands. We only have one, but they have two, and they can make over a hundred different kinds of sounds. And the sound that I hate the most from cats is whenever they do the thing that you hit. <laughs> oh, I hate that sound. Oh, it like gives me, oh, it makes me squirm. Anyway, anyway, the point that I'm trying to make is this. Listen, Jem, you listen very carefully. A teachable person loves learning and growing. Unteachable people hate it. These are the arrogant people with haughty eyes that scoff and mock God, especially his wisdom. They don't like to grow, but teachable people, they love to grow and they love to keep learning. And this is a very good thing. Do you know why, Jemu? You are always growing and you can't stop it. Some of you guys know this because, again, in grade seven, you're shorter than me, praise the Lord. Uh, but then by the time you get into grade nine, you are taller than me. Um, that just happens. Some of you are not taller than me, and I think God's blessing me through you, okay? Um, <laughs> just give me some, some, some self-confidence there. Um, others of you in grade seven, you're already taller than me, and that's messed up. Um, <laughs> there's something wrong. But the thing is, is all of us, we are always growing. You can't stop it. You can't stay in Yuchibu forever. You can't stay in Yunyambu forever. You can't stay in Chodumbu forever. You cannot even stay in youth forever. Uh, you will eventually continue to grow and that growing will not stop the question then you have to ask yourself is how am i growing how are you growing in what way are you growing as a person because you can't stop it you're going to be growing you're going to constantly grow until the day that god calls you away from this earth you are always growing the question that you and i have to ask ourselves is how am i growing and gem youth this is where the role of god's wisdom comes into play as you continue to grow, you have to ask yourself, am I growing according to the wisdom of God? Am I growing in Christ? Am I growing in the way of Jesus Christ or am I not? That's what you have to ask yourselves. And at least up until youth, you have the shelter and the cover of ministry, your parents pushing you out of bed, pushing you out of the house to come to church and leaders and pastors to surround you and to encourage you to keep coming up. But when you go into college, that's when it really, you really have to make that choice. That choice is up to you. And God knows everyone's heart, where you are, how you're growing. How is your heart growing? How is your attitude growing? How is your mindset growing? Is it like Jesus Christ? Is it in the wisdom of God? Or are you growing outside of that, apart from that? Because you're always going to be growing. You're always going to be learning. The question is, what are you learning? And what are you growing into? And obviously, for myself and your leaders, our hope is that you will continue to grow in the way and according to the truth and the life of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. That's why he died for us, Jem Youth. It's so that we can grow in him. And so the one takeaway that I have for us today is this. A wise person loves to grow in God's wisdom. A wise person is opposite of a mocker or a scoffer. Mockers and scoffers, they are pessimistic, they are cynical, they are uh, negative, but a wise person is always seeking after God's heart. How can I keep growing, God? How can I keep giving? How can I keep 
magnifying Christ in my life? How can I keep reflecting him through my words and through my actions, through my attitude, the way that I live, the way that I am? How can I keep showing Christ because people need him, God? I get that now. I understand the gospel that we need a Lord and a Savior. We need Jesus Christ. We need your son. So how can I keep growing in him so that I can keep showing him through my life? That is a wise person. And that will continue to go until the day that we die, Jem Yu. It will never stop. I don't know how many times Pastor Park has read the Bible, but he's read it a lot. And every time he reads it, God always teaches him, shows him something new. That's how we were made to grow, Jemu. That's how we were made to grow. A wise person loves to grow in God's wisdom, in God's way of thinking, in God's way of understanding, in Christ's way of doing. That is God's wisdom. This is the response of the wise person, Jemu. Optimistic people are not dumb. They're just chasing after the heart of God, putting their hope in the unseen, putting their hope in the things that we think are impossible, but nothing, nothing is impossible with God. Amen. Amen. Believe that, Jemu. Become that kind of Christ follower. And the thing is this, as we continue in this passage in verse 10, this is something that a wise person understands. The wise person in God, that is growing in godly wisdom, they understand that the fear of the Lord is the foundation of wisdom. Knowledge of the Holy One results in good judgment. Jemuth, when you learn to respect God, when you begin to really honor God with your life and honor God with your choices, honor God with your thoughts and your attitude, when you begin to respect Him, you will begin to make the best choices in life. Not just good choices, not just decent choices, but you will begin to make good judgment, like the best kind of choices you could ever make because you are pursuing God's wisdom out of reverence for him because he is greater than your ways. He is higher than your ways. Once you submit to that, you will always want to make the choices that will honor him and those are always the choices that are best for us. And so the one who continues to grow in God's wisdom, this is how they benefit. This is what the author writes in verses 11 and 12. This is what we're told. Wisdom will multiply the days of the wise person and will add years to your life. If you become wise, you will be the one to benefit. If you scorn God's wisdom, you will be the one to suffer. And some of you guys might be sitting there thinking, Pastor Josh, I'm still young. I've got years to go. And here's the thing, Jemuth, because you're young, because you haven't reached 34 yet, I'm here to tell you, how you begin now will shape you greatly when you get to my age. If you don't begin now, you might grow into a way of thinking that is so stiff and hard that more and more as you look at God's ways compared to your ways because you've been living your way for so long and you look at God's ways, you're going to be like, Dude, I don't want to do that. That looks so displeasing. Like that doesn't look satisfying. Like God wants me to sacrifice everything. Dude, man, I've been like making all of this stuff for myself. And as you get into that habit, it's harder and harder and harder. It'll get harder for you to submit yourself to God and his wisdom. It'll get harder for you to really honor God and to revere God. It begins now, Jemmy. You say you're young and, and you're not worried about it, but I'm telling you, what you do now and how you begin now, it will greatly shape your walk with God in the future as you get older. Some of the things that God's wisdom has taught me, okay, and it's, the wisdom of God is still teaching me, right? The word of God, I'm still growing in this, Jem Youth. Uh, I think I've gotten better over the years, but I'm still growing. Like, I don't even have it down. I don't even have it pat down. Um, there are times when I think I'm doing well, and things, sometimes there are seasons where I'm like, oh my gosh, I really screwed that up. I wasn't following Christ's way whatsoever. Um, but I just wanted to share with you three things that have been really, um, things that I've been aiming to grow in in my life. Uh, there are three things. Number one, one of the things that God's wisdom has taught me, that God's word has taught me, is how to stay calm during a storm. This was probably one of my most difficult things personally. I'm a person who likes to freak out. I, I, can't, I can't help it. Like when I get stressed out, I freak out. Like if, if there's a lot of things that need to happen, I like, I don't know. I, I just start freaking out and I don't know what to do. Like I get pimples, like my best friends come out to play and, and they don't go away for a while and it just, it just gets really stressful. 
Um, but these days, I think, especially since last year, um, I've kind of been growing in this. I've been getting better at it, where when things get stressful, I've been learning to just really entrust it to God and not to freak out about it, that I have to take care of everything, but that remembering that it's all in God's hands, that's something that God's wisdom has been growing me in. Another thing is watching my words before I say it or before I hurt someone. When I get angry, always watching my words. For some of you, you guys have heard this from me because we've talked. James chapter 1, verse 19 is always the verse that I go to. Be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry because an angry person does not show the righteousness of God. Be slow to anger. Be slow to anger. Be slow to anger. It's something that I have to constantly remind myself and review James 1.19 over and over and over again so that I don't get angry at someone right away. Uh, the third thing that I've been trying to grow in is uh, giving in a manner that is freeing, giving that blesses my life even though I have little, giving uh, because it actually really does heal my soul to know that something is not being wasted but that it's being used to really benefit someone and to bless someone and to really help someone along the way. This is also another thing that God has been constantly growing me in. Um, and yours might be different. Yours might be the same. I don't know. Um, but the thing is, is you and I, we must never stop growing in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. We must never stop growing in Jesus Christ, Jem Yu. Um, in closing of today's sermon series and the passage, um, I have a video that I'd like to show you. It's an old video. Uh, th this one is a remake of it, but the video that uh, I originally watched when I was your age, I was actually in grade eight or nine when this video came out. Um, so it was like 1998, 1999. Uh, it, was, it was a really famous video. I think Koreans were like buying this in the bulk. I don't know, Korean Christians. They were like buying it in the bulk, but it's called The Interview with God. Um, and there are some really biblical wise sayings. It's not just... It's not man's wisdom. Everything in this video is, is biblical. It's grounded in God's word. Um, and so what I would like for you guys to do is I would like for you guys to watch the video first. And then I have a, a, a short reflection thing that I would like for you to do. Um, and so, JD, if we can get that video ready. Some of the things that you're going to see in this video will be like this. Listen very carefully. You're young. You're not old yet. But it's good to think about. And you guys might even think about your parents. You might think about some other people that you already know. Uh, but here's, here are some of the things that come from the video. Most people in the world, they waste, their, they waste their health in order to make money, only to waste all of their money in order to restore their health. That's biblical wisdom. Because they're pursuing things that are not that important. And so you, you, you get all of this stuff personally, but it doesn't really help you in the long run. Um, one other thing is that many people live in fear of what is to come. We're afraid of the future because we cannot see it. Um, a person who is wise doesn't fear the future because it's in God's hands. It's fine. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm going to leave it to God and I'm going to trust him because he will always make his plans work out for me, which is the best for me. Amen? Right? But foolish people, they're afraid of the future and they're so afraid of it that it causes them to worry in the present so that they are neither living in the present or the future, and they're just kind of wasting life. Um, this is another biblical wisdom. Um, and so we're going to be watching this video. Um, it's also on the back side of your sermon note cards, um, so you will be reviewing it later, but just go ahead and watch the video first, okay? Let's go ahead and play it, J.D.
it makes you think. Uh, when I first watched this video, uh, I thought a lot about people that were older than me. I didn't think much about my own peers because we were really young. Again, I was your age when I first saw this. Um, but it makes you think. Like when I grow up, I don't want to be like that. And that's why I tell you guys, actually, it's actually from this video, I tell you guys, don't be so quick to grow up so quickly. Your youth, be you. Try, stop trying to be an adult. That's why I tell you guys, don't work. Unless you really have to. I mean, if you, if you really want to, go ahead, work. But you, this is your time to receive, to be a student, to learn and to grow. Um, adult life will come. You're going to have to work for the rest of your life. You will learn responsibility as you grow. And don't be so worried about the future because the future is in God's hands. Amen? Oh, so enjoy the present. Enjoy every step now because our life is in God's hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. Amen? Oh, don't fret about those things.